of a man, Cedric Benson, a shell of a man. You ain't got nothing between your ears but a bag of bricks. Cedric carried a smile. He always did. With a grin upon his face, Cedric Benson stood at the front desk of the boarding house, his hat in hand and his tattered suitcase balancing precariously on the edge of the desk. The front desk woman counted out Cedric's change as if it were a chore, taking her time with each dollar placed muttering to herself in annoyance. Though Cedric had made efforts to learn her name over his two-week stay at the home, he dared not use it. It was always better to say Miss and Ma'am, even if the person wasn't as prickly as this one. She had barely made eye contact with him since the moment he first walked through the door, and even now she made no effort to hide her animosity towards the man who stood before her. Despite all this, however, Despite knowing she would make no effort to meet his gaze, he held his smile. The many years he had spent servicing the upper class taught him a few things about keeping a smile. Most importantly, that it was what was expected of a person like him. Move your suitcase off the counter, boy, she barked without turning her attention away from the small stack of singles she perched over upon the oak wood desk. My sincerest apologies, miss. Cedric said as he quickly slid the heavy suitcase down to the floor by his wing-tipped shoes. The suitcase, which held the entirety of his life, landed with a heavy thud that made Cedric swallow hard. The case was worn, but had served him well over the many years of use. As he placed it, he was reminded of the recent purge he'd performed on his wardrobe. He had tossed out most of the rags he had traveled with since leaving Georgia, and felt satisfied and grateful for the small reminder when moving the luggage. Instead, the suitcase now offered white suit jackets, high-collared dress shirts, and three thin black ties. These were his vestments, and he felt a sense of pride when donning them. Who are you fooling, Cedric? Ain't nobody buying the niceties you selling. Take that smile from your face before I slap it off! Cedric closed his eyes and shook his head softly, the voice as shrill and slurred as he remembered. He held his eyes tightly until the voice that echoed in his mind was replaced by the equally shrill sound of the desk woman. "'What's wrong with you, boy?' she said as he quickly opened his eyes. She stood with a disgusted look painted on her face, holding his eight single dollars out impatiently towards him. Almost ashamed, Cedric stooped down and picked up his suitcase before taking the money from her hand. "'Thank you, Miss Anne. You have yourself a wonderful day now.' he said as he placed his hat back upon his head and left a dollar tip for her on the desk. She scowled at the dollar as he turned away, his smile never fading. Stupid fool! Embarrassing yourself like that! She thinks you just a dumb, ignorant boy, and I don't blame her! Cedric stepped out the front door of the boarding house as the cold January air bit through his thin coat. He had purposely chosen a boarding house close to the Arkham Harbor so that he would only have a short walk to the ship on the morning of his departure. But now, he almost regretted being so close, as a taxi couldn't be justified. He moved through the tall snow as the wind fought against him almost comically. He laughed the deep <laughs> southern laugh to himself as he could only imagine what he looked like trying to wrestle the wind, his suitcase swinging wildly with each gust. <laughs> Stop laughing, you ignorant fool! People must think you're a damn lunatic! You're gonna get locked away, Cedric! And wipe that goddamn grin off your face! This time, the voice of his mother carried with it the visage of her. Drunk and frail, rocking by the fireplace as she did nearly every night of his childhood. She sat above him, the bottle held loosely in her hand, he on the floor kneeling by her feet. As his mind turned to this tableau, he could feel the wet of her spittle as it flew from her mouth at each insult that she hurled towards him, the snow that peppered his cheeks, mocking the memory. Eventually, he made it to the harbor just as the gangway opened for the crew and service people to board. As always, his timing was impeccable, and the line that formed behind him reminded him of the importance of being on time. Papers, said the large bearded man at the gangway flatly. 
Cedric searched the man's eyes for a moment as he pulled out his passport, ticket, and papers. He had always been a great read of people, and there was little doubt that this was the ship's undercrew captain, a man that could make or break the next six months of his life, and so Cedric continued to smile humbly. Have them all right there, sir. You'd think I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. The small smirk that flashed on the large man's face was Cedric's green light. My mama, kindest woman I ever met, she'd always tell me, Cedric... That was as far as he got before the large man said, I don't want your life story, boy. You do your job, I'll do mine. Cedric paused for a moment, but kept his smile wide. Of course, sir, my apologies, he said humbly and stood there silently as the large man reviewed the papers. Cedric's eyes glassed over the yellow Starline cruise ship before him as his mother spoke. You fool! You dumb, ignorant, stupid, good-for-nothing- Okay, you're good to go, the man said in a voice that cut above the whistling winds that enveloped the docks. Cedric flashed his large smile and nodded as he began up the gangway, just as the large man slapped a heavy hand on Cedric's chest. You just watch yourself, boy, he said, with the same smirk he had before, now framed in a much different, savage light than Cedric had initially thought. Cedric, however, smiled and nodded obediently. To the man and to the world that watched, the smile was wide and genuine and kind. A smile that had gotten him far in life. A smile that told a thousand tales in a thousand different ways. A smile that so masterfully hid the force in which he clenched his teeth in rage. (laughs) 